Good morning, friends, and welcome back. Today, I'd like to show you how you can decoupage with wrapping paper. I'll show you how to do that step by step. And I'll also tell you about a couple of minor disadvantages that can come along with this. So for today, I'm taking a metal container and what I'm going to do is try to match the background color of my wrapping paper. Even though I am cutting the images out, the great thing about this is that you already know what color to paint your surface because the background color matches all of the pattern on the inside. So I've already spray painted this metal container with a base coat. I didn't do anything to the inside for the sake of this video. I'm just going to leave that the way it is. And I'm now going to take chalk paint and cover the whole surface. I'm using an Annie Sloan chalk paint because it's what matches this particular paper. And there are different techniques for using chalk paint. I'm using a pouncer brush because again, I like a little bit of a rough aged surface. So when you pounce the paint on, it gives it somewhat of a stone texture. You can use a paint brush. You can use the special chalk paint brushes. This part of it doesn't matter. Just paint it whatever way you'd like to. And I'm going to put this aside to dry, but chalk paint dries so quickly uh, within 10 minutes this will be dry and I can start to work on it. While that's drying, I'm going to take my wrapping paper and this was on a roll. You can use sheets of wrapping paper. And here's one thing that could be a disadvantage to this. Wrapping papers come in different thicknesses. So this happens to be a pretty thin wrapping paper. There are also some very thick wrapping papers, some embossed wrapping papers. I don't recommend working with those because they just don't look right when you're finished. The thinner wrapping paper is actually a little bit better. So I'm cutting out one section because now I'm going to take my small decoupage or my small curved scissors after I cut the big pieces out and I'm going to cut out the center piece of this image. So here's one of the benefits of cutting with wrapping paper. It's much more firm. And if you'll notice, I'm holding the paper with my left hand. And when I'm cutting these leaves out, I'm kind of moving the paper a little bit back and forth, left and right, left and right, so that I have a nice natural edge on these leaves. And by the way, you can cut some of the image away and I'll also show you that when it comes to some of these very fine leaves up in the corner here where I am now, I'm not going, I'm sorry I'm out of focus. I'm not going to cut those out. I'm just going to focus on the larger center images. So I'm going to use these small curved scissors and just go around these edges on the larger flower. Now I have my main image cut out and you notice how the center where I did not cut the paper out matches the background almost identically. So this will look like it's painted on. And that's another good thing about a thin wrapping paper. If it's too thick, you'll always see an edge on the end there. And it would require something like 25 to 30 coats of varnish to get that to disappear. And who has that kind of time? <laughs> I don't. So. I want to show you something. I'm taking some decoupage glue and by the way, you can use any decoupage glue for this because we are not using napkins. I normally specify napkin decoupage glue, but I'm going to place, <laughs> that's my cell phone, sorry, place the decoupage glue down just over the area right now where I want to place my image. And you want to put a decent coat on because we are working with wrapping paper. But here's the other thing. To the left of this, you can see a glass bowl there and that's got water in it. And that's because I'm going to submerge this paper in the water. So I press it down. Now you can use a lint-free cloth to get rid of the excess water. I'm just going to kind of drip it off a little bit there. And then I'm going to place this down over my surface. And the reason that I'm using that water is it is because it makes the paper nice and pliable. Another great thing about wrapping paper is you 
have virtually no wrinkles. You really shouldn't have any wrinkles because the paper is not at all like a napkin. It lays down flat and smooth. The water and the weight of the paper together cause it to lay right down. So I'm going right over the surface with decoupage glue. And you want to kind of go back and forth because you really want to get those edges. Oh, how annoying. You really want to get those edges secured down. So you want to make sure you go from the center out and then from out in with your decoupage glue. Make sure that your edges have glue under them and they're down securely. So you might even want to press some of them down. And I'm extending the decoupage glue out a little bit more off to the sides here. I'm also going to add a little bit of the paper down here at the bottom, but I also want to show you something. These ridges that are down here, that is one of the disadvantages of using paper. The paper is nowhere near as pliable as a napkin. So you would only be able to cut out an image that fit right in the space that you need it, or just a little larger than. So you wouldn't be able to use paper on a basket, a wicker, anything like that. You would have to stick with napkins because the paper is just not that pliable. So I'm going to add a couple of these pieces to the bottom and up to the top and finish decoupaging the same exact way. And once that has dried, I'm going to cover the whole surface with decoupage glue. And I don't just mean the area that I just decoupaged, but I want to cover the whole surface so that I keep this uniform. It doesn't matter if you're using matte, glossy, or satin of a decoupage glue. You just want to cover the whole surface. When you're done, put this aside to dry. So for the most part, this is done. You could just add your top coat to it, but I want to do a little bit more decorating on this. I'm just propping this up so that you can see it on the angle a little bit better. And what I'm going to do is take a couple of these markers, and these are the only markers that I know of on the market that are permanent, yet for a couple of seconds, you can wet them and smudge them so that you don't have a hard line, and I'll show you what I mean. Now you can work with these markers over a wet surface or a dry surface. You don't want it too wet. But what I'm doing is I dip my finger into the water and just went around a small area of where I want to apply these markers. And I'm spreading the water out and this is going to give it a watercolor effect. And you can get these markers in all different colors. And I'm just going a little bit around the flower outline. And now I am moving this paint around the marker. Now for me that's a little too watercolory. It's too muted. I like the color to be a little bit more intense, but I did want to show you this is one way that you can use these. You can also use a dry paper towel to blot it a little bit so that you could see it's just a little bit more muted. And I'm just doing the same thing with another color, adding a little water around the outline. Then I'm taking a little bit of a brown sienna type of uh, marker and I'm going to go in here and again I'm just trying to show you the effect that this can give and this dries permanently so once it does dry you're all set but do you see how you can blend this right in with the water and again you can blot it and then reapply it so that you can kind of build up as much of a background color as you want then again you may want to use this over a dry surface so you do the same thing, you apply it dry, and then you use your finger to blend it out. And again, I'm just trying to create the illusion of a little bit of a shadow here. So I'm going to go around the whole image this way and create somewhat of a shadow around this. And because that dries immediately once you're done blending it, I took a flexible toothbrush like this dipped it in some water, and I have a little bit of chalk paint in there. It is kind of a warm white, and you want to flick off as much of the chalk paint first as you can before you do this process. But 
I painted and decoupaged this piece of paper because I wanted to practice on it to see how everything looked. So you may want to see if you like a lighter color, a similar color, a darker color. I did both and you'll see how I did this on the project. So I can see I have a little too much paint on my brush. So I wet it a little bit, then I tamped it down on the paper picked up a little bit more paint. You just want to get a feel for this and see what's comfortable. But I definitely wanted to flick off the heavy spots of the paint so that when I put it on the project, I just got little flecks of it. And the flecks are so tiny that you can't really see them right now, which is what I'm going for. And I'll do a close up so that you can see how this looks. So I think these tiny flecks on here give it a little bit more of a vintage look. I'm going to let this dry quickly and then add some darker flecks over it. So using this same process, I went over this with the darker flecks and put it aside to dry before I added my final top coat. Now that everything's dry, I'm going to take my triple thick spray and I would prefer to use a spray on top coat for this and while I'm at it I'm going to add just a smattering of glitter this is the Krylon triple thick and for some reason these triple thick glazes add a richer deeper gloss that really does look like glass. So while this is still wet, I'm going to add just a small amount of glitter. And now that it's all done, I'll show you how it looks. Well, now we're outside and you can see that I used a very, very small amount of glitter because you can barely see it. I wanted to bring this out in the sunlight. This still maintains a very vintage look and that's because I added those flecks on there. I used those pens to create a little bit of shadow around here and blended them in. And I am going to have links on my Facebook page so that you can find those markers that I'm talking about because they're very specific. You can either buy them through me and when you click on the link, by the way, you can buy the markers and just continue to shop while you're there and get whatever else you need. So that way you can either read about the products or buy the products and complete this project. And I'll show you how this looks in a few still shots uh, in a couple of other lights and settings. Now I'm inside, obviously. And by the way, it's a huge help to me when you guys share my videos, whether it's through Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, or on Twitter. And for all I know, a brand new social media site came out while I was talking to you, or there's just one out there that I'm not aware of. I can't keep up with all of this. Like I'm sure a lot of you you can relate to that, right? Every time we turn around, there's something new that we have to learn or catch up with. So for now, let's just keep making our decoupage projects and worry about that. I'll get the videos out to you. Something that I forgot to mention, one of the things that inspired me to work with wrapping paper is because on my wedding day, I got so many beautiful gifts wrapped in beautiful wedding papers, and I could not bring myself to throw them away. So if you're a sentimentalist, you can reuse a lot of those papers. Just be careful when you tear it off and reuse sections of it. And uh, once again, thank you so much for subscribing. I love all of your comments. I love hearing from you guys, and I will see you next week with another video. Thanks again, my friends. Bye-bye.